Hello everyone, my name is Jerry Button and now I'm going to show you how to make a simple Apple TV style wallpaper within Pixelmator. Now you can look at this image and say, well that doesn't look entirely like Apple's wallpapers, but that's true. Pixelmator has a few limitations and I change around the colors of the actual wallpaper to suit my own preferences. I was inspired to do this tutorial by seeing a Photoshop version within YouTube by a user named Photoshop Talent. I will be sending him a message letting him know that I did a Pixelmator version of his tutorial. With that said, ready? Let's get started. Begin by creating a new image within Pixelmator. When you get the new dialog box appear, change the width to 1024 and the height to 768. Make sure your resolution is at 300 in case you want to print this on a nice lovely piece of photo paper and then click OK. When you get your new canvas appear, if it is white by default, hit Command I to invert the color to black. Then in your layers palette, rename the untitled layer to background. I do this so if I ever need to go back and change something, I know exactly what layer it's on. It's, it, it just helps for better organization, and anybody using a layer-based image editor or video editor should practice naming their layers. Next, make a new layer and call this brushing. Over here you'll see your two, your two main color palettes, your foreground color and your background color. With the foreground selected, simply go over to your swatches and click any pink one you want. I'm just going to use this one right here. Hit X on your keyboard to bring the black background to the foreground and then choose a blue. Hit X again because we want the pink one forward first and then choose a large brush. I'm going to make my brush size roughly 626. I'm going to click my brush and I'm going to click right here once. Nope, I'm going to move that right about there. Okay. Then hit X on your keyboard to bring the blue forward and then click right about here. Then hit D on your keyboard to reset the colors and if white is the background, hit X to bring it to the foreground. Change 626 down to a nice 365 or 313 if you want and click in the middle of the two previous spheres. Okay. Next make a new layer and call this one Bokeh B-O-K-E-H. I'm not sure if that's pronounced properly but that's okay. Then get a hard brush. I'm going to use about uh, 192. I'm going to click here and then I'm going to size my brush down to one, let's see, 151. Going to click here. And then finally, make it just a bit smaller. And then click here. Now I'm going to get my move tool and move them down just a slight bit to about right here. I'm going to take Command J to duplicate this, Command F within Pixelmator to rotate them 180 degrees. I'm going to bring them up here like this. Okay. That looks about right. I'm going to just move them so they're centered more. And now I'm going to merge the layer together. When it merges it, it will call it untitled layer number one, so I just rename it to Bokeh. Change its blending mode to overlay and then change its opacity to about a 22 or anywhere in between. It's up to you. Duplicate the layer by hitting Command J. Rename it Bokey Rotate and then hit Command F once again and rotate it slightly in any angle you wish. And once again bring its opacity down to about uh, we'll say 11. It's fine. Next make another little <clears throat> Sorry, make another new layer. Call this one Brightness. Get a large brush. I'm going to say about 313. Uh, let's see here. Is it that big enough? No. Make it a bit bigger. Let's say about uh, 452. Make it 452. In the tool options, make sure your opacity is set to 100% and then click in the middle of the white sphere. Okay. Now change the blending mode to overlay and you have a now 
you have a, a brief idea of what it looks like. It's not spot on what Apple makes, but it's pretty close, especially with Pixelmator. It does have a few limitations that Photoshop does have that this application, you know, may get down the road, but this is coming pretty close, so it's looking pretty good. Click your move tool, and then make another, hopefully the final layer, and call this lines. Then grab your brush tool, get a small brush, say for example this one. Let's see, change the stroke, don't leave that alone. The opacity is fine, the size is fine, the spacing, you can change the spacing if you want, and the scatter you can make it more if you want. But I'm going to make this scatter quite large. I'm going to bring the flow down pretty low. I'm going to bring the hardness down. I'm going to bring the hardness all the way up. And I'm going to click OK. And then I'm just going to brush around on these lines. Oh, nope, that's not right. I'm going to double click this. I'm going to make its diameter much, much bigger. Sorry about that, guys. Now click around. Change the blending mode to overlay. And then the opacity down to 10%. Or if you want, you can bring it to 28. Go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. One, two, three, four. Click it four times. Okay. I should rename that. I don't know why I call it lines. I'm sorry for that, guys. Rename this one Brushing Random. And for the final layer, call it Clouds. Go to Filter, Generator clouds, click OK, change the blending mode to vivid light, and bring its opacity down to about, we'll say a 10%, and there you have it. It's just a basic Apple TV styled color wallpaper with three simple spheres colored many multiple times moved around. It's nothing too taxing, anyone can make this. It can be achieved, it can get different looks within any application that you use. This is just the way it is achieved with Pixelmator because of its limitations versus Photoshop. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, guys, and there'll be more coming soon. Thanks for watching.